Hi there, I'm Burl. This is Bill and this is Dale. The video you are about to see is of a bedroom or a bunkhouse slide out which has no 110 wiring in it normally. Uh, you need When you do a main slide out like a 154 inch room, 144 uh, inch room, you have 12, or 110 volt wiring in it. The ceiling lights are 110, you have recepts in it and the wiring comes up the bottom. So you need to flip the breaker for that room to kill the 110 when removing the main wall. The other thing is is that on a, on a bedroom slide or a bunkhouse slide if you're removing the main wall the wiring normally does not run down the main wall. On the main slide outs it does. It comes through the roof and comes down the top of the wall and also comes through under the floor and comes up the bottom of the wall for the 110. So you need to make sure you flip the breaker and you need to take into account of the wiring for the wall lights and the recepts that are on the floor or in the booth dinette. Remove the fuse and if you have the main room, flip the breaker. Removing the corner block on the slide out with a small pry bar, uh, it's normally glued and, and nailed. Removing the fascia board on the top and the sides, being careful not to break the lips on the corner blocks. Removing the rubber cut around the staples, it helps save the rubber and not rip it up. Remove the screws from the right angle corner uh, plywood corners. They're normally in the bottom or inside inch and a half because that's the thickness of your roof and the walls. Removing the bunk trim piece in front. Unscrewing the top panel. In this case it was glued very well and uh, the back half, back six inches, had to be cut out to have access to the screws. Uh, then go outside, remove the belt rail on the radius metal, end caps, cut your silicone, and remove your radius metal. If there's a hidden screw, you got to remove the extrusion first. Remove the screws from the bottom that are running through the floor into the bottom of the main wall. We'll remove your wire uh, swing arm. Remove your uh, ABS corner blocks. Cut the caulking around the edges of it. Two-sided tape helps hold it. There's also putty or caulking behind there. Cut your Everbond tape, drill and remove the right angles in the corners, remove your screw cover, removing your screws from the top molding, remove your screws from the extruded uh, ring molding, they will come through the tape so you don't have to remove the tape. Bend the ring molding forward, it helps break loose the putty. And, eat, and cut your D-cell. Remove the molding on the sides holding the rubber down. Pull your rubber loose on three sides. This needs to be done to have access to the screws so you can remove the top deck off of the roof. Remove the decking and rubber and throw it away. Remove the screws that will be in the 2 by 2s screwed down to the wall. The end panel has a top screw holding the glass in place. Remove your D-cell on the back of your ring molding. Removing the screws from the ring molding. Remove the ring molding, being careful not to bend it up because you'll want to reuse it. Remove the screws holding the glass in place. Remove your screw cover on your bottom piece of molding. Removing the screws from the molding. That allows you to open up the side glass to get in there and remove the screws holding the side wall. Remove the side wall from the slide out. 
At this time you can remove the windows, it's just easier to remove them on the floor. Go ahead and remove the bracketry. Remove the rest of the D-cell off of the ring molding. Your Everbond tape. Clean your molding. Scrape the putty and stuff off us. And clean your molding up. That way you can reuse it. Removing the excess caulking that's left on the end glass, in wall glass. Clean that up and wipe it down. Remove your uh, D cell or putty tape from the windows, cleaning the windows. Wipe down with alcohol when you're done. And then reattach D cell to the window. Attaching the gimp back to the top of the wall, uh, shoot the staple in at an angle and that keeps it from shooting back through the panel. Putting the wall back in place. Stick the top up in there, lifting the center of the roof up so the bottom will set on the floor. Once it's in place, reach in. Put your screws through the end walls into the main wall. Re-insulate the end walls. Reattach the glass to the main wall. Apply your putty tape to the ring molding. Rescrew the floor back up to the main wall. Reattach your uh, wire bracket, swing arm, tack your radius metal in place, apply your ring molding, screw in place, finish up your belt rail on the radius metal, put your screw cover in, end caps on, reattach your radius corner pieces, Put your roof decking in place, lifting the rubber so it doesn't get bound up in there. Screw through the decking into the end wall and across the main wall, reattaching the roof and the decking at the same time. Use an M11 to staple down the center seam of the decking. Apply masking tape. This will help prevent the staples from backing out or showing the heads of the staple in the rubber. Lay out your rubber. Lifting up your uh, wiper seal. Making sure you have plenty of rubber on the inside of the unit or the back of the fascia board. Lifting up your uh, wiper seal once again so it doesn't get bound up in there. Roll the rubber back, apply your glue, roll it out evenly and smoothly throughout the top of the roof. Lay out the rubber. Smooth the rubber out, taking the wrinkles out. Attach your top ring molding in place. Once again, making sure there's no wrinkles. Pull it down and the rubber roof down in the front. Screw the ring molding in. Drill and rivet the right angle corner pieces. Put the screw back in the, the glass on the end wall to the roof. 
apply the top molding to the end walls stretch your rubber out once again to get rid of wrinkles cut off excess rubber apply the corner blocks two-sided tape is used a little bit of silicone can be used to help adhere it to apply your screw cover end caps cut the excess rubber on the ring molding wipe down with alcohol apply your Everbond tape do your best to make sure there's no wrinkles in it and it lays down nice and flat first layer goes down on the rubber to the back of the ring clean with alcohol for the second layer of tape it goes on top of the first layer and ro rolled up the back of the fascia ring to help prevent water from getting down in the back of the wall Clean your vertical ring moldings, clean with alcohol. Apply D cell. Do not stretch around the corners. It will come loose eventually if you do. Run it to the corner and turn it. Reinstall the windows. Day and night brackets. Balance brackets. Day and night shade. and balances. Resecure the top bunk to the main wall. Clean your plywood fascia parts. Reinstall glue onto the top of the bunk. Roll your rubber back. Place your molding. And screw in place. Should be on the front edge, flush to the front edge of the roof. Reinstall the right angle corner blocks. This uh, helps you keep the room square. Install your F trim. Pull your rubber over, nail in place with an M11. Roll and tuck your corners. Cut off excess rubber. 
We use a grinder to take the stubbles of the nails down so that the back of the fascia board is nice and flat. Use a pen nailer to uh, install your fascia board, putting the corners together on the inside. Or a brad nailer can be used. They're, they're, they're the same tool. Install corner blocks. Putty all your holes. Wipe down. Install the trim piece on the front of the buck. Reinsert your fuse and turn your breaker back on. These are the primary tools that are used in the video demonstration. This tool right here, M11, is what we use to put the rubber on on the inside. This is the type of staple that goes in that gun. Anything close to this would, would do the job. This is a pin nailer we use to put on the fascia board. You need inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half staples, the um, brad nails or pin nails to apply that fascia. It leaves a smaller hole than a, than a staple does, less to putty, less to see when you're done. Uh, recently we have changed uh, to a different type of seal for the ring molding on the outside. Uh, if you have any questions concerning that or you run into that issue, give the tech department a call and they can talk you through it. Thank you.